everybody and welcome to 24 days of Ari and Me. If, um, well obviously this is your first day watching because this is the first one so I hope you enjoy this and I hope you continue watching. There's a lot of different things that I'm covering in this 24 day video extravaganza leading up to Christmas. Um, it is the 24 days leading up to Christmas, so you will even have something to watch on Christmas Eve. And as well as this, we are also doing Vlogmas. So if you are enjoying this, you might enjoy my Vlogmas, which I will link below. Um, so welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, thank you for coming and I hope you enjoy this video. This is the very first one, um, so welcome to day one of 24 days of Ari and Me. Right, so today I am going to be speaking about the best family activities to do in Johannesburg. Um, obviously this is more specifically over Christmas, I feel like my lighting is all wrong. Mm, I think that's better. All right. Obviously this is specifically over Christmas and obviously quite specific to Johannesburg um, because I live here and I feel like these are, you know, things that go on over Christmas that you might enjoy and that you and your family might enjoy. So if you're looking for something to do while everyone is on holiday, oh, I've got something in my eye. So if you're looking for something to do while everyone is on holiday, this might help you out. There will be a blog post on this, so you you will get to see exactly what each thing I'm speaking about is actually about. So I'm going to link the blog post as well below. So if you want to book tickets or you want to learn some more, just look at the blog post below and you will be able to find out some more information. Basically this is just an overview. So, um, the first thing that I want to mention is the uh, Red Bus Tour um, of Joburg and you can also do one of Soweto. Um, it's really nice because you get to go to a lot of places in Joburg and then if you choose to do the Soweto one obviously you get to do a ditto with that one. Um, but you you get to do a lot in a small amount of time and you can learn a lot about the city and you can experience quite a bit so I really enjoyed it I've been on one um, we did the one with Joburg when my aunt was here from England and I'm gonna insert some footage here we're gonna go straight up where we're we gonna go this way do we need to go to Fox <laughs> Yeah. Look at this guys. Massive. There's a hot dream bus. Straight across. Everybody get excited. Huh? I said, wouldn't have been Um, 
you get to go and see the Carlton Centre, um, you, you get to go all over Joburg, you get to go to some galleries and you can really, there are a lot of stops um, and you can really choose where you'd like to go. Now one of the stops here that you will see mentioned, it's one of the places in fact that you can, it's in fact the place you have to catch, catch the bus, catch the bus, catch the bus if you are driving, um, is Goldroof City and that is number two on my list. Whilst it is on the red bus tour, you really won't be able to do it justice without spending a day at Goldroof City if you're talking about the theme park. Obviously, here I'm not talking about the casino because casinos can be found anywhere in the world, but I really like Goldroof City theme park. I think it's a lot of fun. Um, the day rates are fairly reasonable. I'm gonna attach a little slider here, which I'll show you the day rates. Um, I really, I do love those kind of things. I like those kind of outings. I feel like something for everybody. Um, <laughs> If you know me, you'll know that my favourite things are actually the teacups, because I'm really boring. But I do really enjoy going to Gold Reef, and I think that's something you can do with either friends or family. Or if you want to include both and really make it a big group, you could probably do that too. Um, so Gold Reef City is also on my list of places that you should definitely visit if you're wanting to do something this festive season. Please bear in mind that obviously over the weekend it's going to be quite busy and as you get further and further towards the festive season as shopping centres are getting busier, so will Goldrew City. <laughs> so please do bear that in mind and just obviously what comes with that is the long queues and the, you know, everything that you need to take into consideration. So really you need to allow yourself a day, I would say, at Goldrew City. Um, I've got third on my list and this is quite, um, I guess this is quite a chilled one. It could also be, um, you know, it's just something nice. So it's just Amarantia Park, uh, that's obviously quite close to me, but you could choose any park that's relatively close to you and your family and your house. Um, you can choose to picnic there or what I like to do is take the dogs for a walk there. And I find that quite relaxing and quite nice and especially when it's the silly season and it's holiday season and everyone is everywhere and I think you start to find yourself getting very stressed out and um, you know, everywhere is so busy. It's quite nice to take some time out and to go and spend a little bit of time in nature. So whether you choose to do that at Emerentia or whether you choose to go to something different, if you don't have dogs, you can go to botanical gardens. Um, when I'm talking botanical gardens, I'm talking the Walter Sisulu Botanical Gardens, obviously those are the botanical gardens in Joburg. Um, and I, both of, both the botanical gardens and Emerentia have a lot of plus points. The only negative for me is that I like to walk with Aria and um, if I'm honest, I can't do that in the botanical gardens, obviously because there's nature and all the foliage and everything needs to be protected so but if you do go there you will you have a high chance of seeing some eagles and some tortoises and all sorts of lovely animals and guinea fowls and peacocks all sorts of stuff um, and then of course you can admire all the foliage there as well so it's really lovely and if you do want um, rather a, a walk, um, you know, with yourself and your family, rather than taking your dogs with you, obviously that is a very good option and entry is quite reasonable as well. Once again, link will be below um, and you can literally pay on entry. Now I'm going to repeat myself here because I think I'm on four. Yeah, I'm on four. Fourth on my list is 
Um, once again, the botanical gardens, but a little differently because there are certain nights where they host carols and this year they are hosting a market. And if you have unfortunately missed that, don't worry, there will be other things for you to attend there, but the carols by candlelight there is beautiful. It really is quite reasonable and you get to listen to some of the best South Africans sing and perform for you and it really is just lovely and magical. I've been quite a few times before and I really enjoyed myself. Um, um, fifth on my list is a fairly obvious one I would say um, and it's going to be, I'm going to do an overview because I am doing a special video on Christmas markets and the, the best ones that I like and the ones that I like to attend. So this one is, is Christmas markets. Um, am I number five? I'm so confused. Anyway, the next one is Christmas markets. They're really nice to attend with your family and you don't have to stay too late. So depending on the age of your kids and how long you really want to stay out, that's inappropriate. I'm dog barking right now <laughs> while I'm trying to film. Anyway, um, you can really judge it for yourself, but there are really nice Christmas markets that go on, like the uh, Parkhurst one. Uh, there, is, there is also the Bryanston Organic Market, and I have suspicion there is also going to be a market at uh, Mall of Africa this year. So, um, once again those kind of things will be linked below but I will go through markets in depth with you uh, at a later stage when I can really get to grips which ones I felt were the best. Uh, the other one I really like is the Monte Cassino one except that it's very early so it's a November market so you won't be able to go to that if you've seen this but I have tweeted about it so if you're watching this video hopefully you follow me on Twitter maybe on Instagram and you saw those tweets and Instagram posts and you went anyway because it is really nice and it is a free entry market. To continue on a I guess a fairly obvious idea um, there are quite a few interesting places to go in Joburg um, quite a, like a few really great restaurants and I will link my choices below and if you are unsure of any of them please check my blog because there are links to all of those restaurants on the blog and um, if I haven't been personally there is someone who I know very well who has been and who really liked the food. Now I'm going to suggest something a little bit different here. I'm going to suggest you try a chess. I'm going to try and do this now. Chess and Yama. Now Chess and Yama I spoke to someone the other day, it actually just means bride meat, so flame grilled meat basically. So it is just meat and then obviously get your starch, usually it's just completely plain meat that gets tossed on the bride and that is exactly what it is about and there is apparently a very 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 good one in Soweto which I've forgotten the name of so I will put it probably along me here and then I will also link it in the description. It has a very good reputation and um, I'm just going to give you some background on it. Um, it's owned by a white guy and he actually, yeah, he owns it. It's in Soweto. It's really apparently very, very good and it's got a very vibey and interesting atmosphere. Um, further, going on, along that kind of sort of route. Um, there are plenty of better places in Soweto than the Lakazi Street. So if you're considering going to Soweto, don't feel like A, you have to go to Lakazi Street or B, you have to eat something like sheep's head or, you know. But I would suggest, and this coming from a vegetarian, I really would suggest sampling the local cuisine because it is very different from your traditional uh, run-of-the-mill food and if you 
would like to sort of learn a bit more about yourself. Sometimes it's nice to sort of put yourself to the test and eat something a bit different and um, that will definitely sort of put you in a different frame of mind. And I, I think that sometimes we're so closed off, um, you know, and we, we don't even attempt anything else. But if you are a bit open-minded and willing, um, do attempt to eat something different um, and more traditional. Uh, like tripe or something like that. I, mean, I have to admit, I have never had tripe. Um, I know my dad has, and I know he didn't like it, but he didn't like the way my grand cooked it. And I think that really has to do, with the, I think that really is the, the pitfall for a lot of foods um, that are different. Um, I think if you don't cook vegetables well, they're not nice, and you can give a bad impression of vegetables. and ditto with, mm, I'm going to say experimental cuisine. Right, if you want to stay more along the mainstream, you can go to one of the restaurants I'm going to suggest on my list below. Below? One of the restaurants I'm going to suggest on the list next to me here. Um, these are my top five of restaurants in Joburg. Please don't be fooled. They are not hugely expensive. I have chosen them because they are very, very good, not because they are hugely expensive. In fact, quite the opposite. Um, I really enjoy Tasha's, so that is obviously on my list. Um, I really loved, uh, I love the Big Mouth uh, because I do enjoy sushi. Apologies, I'm actually a pescatarian. <laughs> So, I'm not a vegetarian, I'm a pescatarian. I do enjoy some sushi and so the Big Mouth is a great option for that and it is fairly mainstream because it's on Mandela Square. So if you do have overseas visitors, obviously it's a great place to take them. Um, there is a Tasha's there as well, not open as late as the Big Mouth. Uh, of course, also on my list is Wasabi, which is at Mall of Africa. Fantastic restaurant, absolutely brilliant. They do serve sushi, it, that isn't their specialty, but if you can't find something you like on the menu, I really don't know what you do like because their menu really is very extensive and when I went, it was extremely well prepared and they were extremely, I mean, it was just, it was a great meal. Um, also on my list is Cold Kakio's Pizzeria. It is a nice, reasonable pizzeria, homemade, family oriented, very, very nice. You can now get a vegan pizza there and of course there are the um, chef's pizzas as well so you can have a really, really over the top pizza if you'd like um, but you can also get the really simple uh, basic margarita and add some chili if you like that and I know a couple of people who do. And then last on my list is actually called La Rosa Mexican Grill and Quileria. Um, that is literally, it's in Rock Cottage so it's really really close to me but if you really are looking for some great Mexican food, um, good tequila, good cocktails, good vibe, the place is very, very, very good. And their food is sublime. There is enough choice, whether you are a vegetarian or, you know, a, really a lover of meat or whatever you may be, there is enough choice for just about anybody there. And you, all of the dishes actually come mild. In order to make them hot, you actually need to add a salsa. So that is the idea behind Mexican food. It's tasty, it's not spicy, naturally. Um, and I really enjoyed going there. So uh, we went there for an evening. We actually went there on Mexican Day of the Dead. Fantastic, absolutely vibey, and it seems vibey every single time. I have been and their tequila cocktails are second to none and they really aren't too sweet which I like. There obviously are the sweet ones if you are a 
lover of sweet things, but I really liked the grapefruit and tequila cocktail. I cannot remember what it was called for the life of me, but it was very, very good. Guys, all of these restaurants, if they have a website, will be linked below so that you can get to them, you can call them, whatever the case may be. If they don't, and I have written a review on my blog, the link will be on my blog page instead. And even so, there might be a link on my blog page. Um, so yes, these are my top five restaurants. If you're just looking to take some people out for dinner, or whether there's overseas visitors, or whatever the case may be, sometimes it's really nice just to go out for a really nice meal. And it doesn't have to be expensive. It doesn't have to be, um, Ponzi, it just has to be amazing and I think that all of these restaurants really cover all of those kind of bases. Tashes, if you haven't tried their macaroons, please do because they are amazing. I have had a lot of people say macaroons are such a 2016 thing and they're just a thing made up for millennials but I really like them and I think they're fantastic and if you do, you will love Tashes because each one tastes just different. Um, I have also been told that have not attended this, um, I am nearly at the end as well of my list. Um, this is high tea at the Saxon Hotel. Um, I have been told by so many people that if you want to go for high tea, the Saxon is really the place to go. And so because of that, I'm putting this on my list. Uh, I don't think it's cheap. I think it's quite expensive per person. And I think you have to book quite well in advance. Um, so I actually don't know what their waiting list is like. But having said that, I really think if you have overseas visitors, this might be a really good option because sometimes you know, sometimes a high tea is exactly what everyone needs. And I know it's a bit fancy and a bit poncy, but sometimes that's really nice. And especially if it's only ladies um, involved, I know that's a bit sexist, but I don't know. As a woman, I've always thought, how many men really enjoy a high tea? I don't know. Maybe there are men who enjoy a high tea, but I haven't met them yet. So if you're a man and you enjoy a high tea, please let me know in the comments below because I would love to know. I really would. Um, also, while I am at it but nearly finished, um, obviously one of the things you're going to need to do is your Christmas shopping. So I have put a few places in here that do tie in with malls that you can go to, um, namely Sandton City and the Mall of Africa, I'm losing my voice, um, but I feel like those two are probably the best malls we have to offer, but if you think differently, once again, please leave a comment below and I am very interested in reading what you guys love to do and if any of you come from Cape Town or I don't know, wherever you come from, just let me know what is best to do in your area and I am really interested to know. Um, the one last thing that I feel is really great is to go and kind of just go and get active. So I've left a few options next to me here. Um, things like go-karting, I found the best places, um, there's rock climbing, go-karting, those kind of things. So if you're more of an active family, you want more than just a walk in the park, literally, um, this might be for you. So I have left those next to me. Um, if you are interested in those, those will be also linked below and you can just check out their pages and see what you would like to do. Um, please let me know if you do any of these things over this festive season and if you do let me know how you enjoyed them. Uh, you can also tag me um, on Instagram or Twitter. Remember it's at Ari and me underscore blog SA on both Instagram and Twitter. So if you would like to contact me and tell me any of your ideas or anything else or if you think I should add something, please let me know um, and I may or may not do so. Um, and of course, just before I finish off, the hashtag is 
hashtag festive family things. Festive family things. Yeah, I'm gonna put that next to me so you can, well, above me or something so you can see. Anyway, hashtag festive family things with Ari and me underscore blog SA if you would like to chat about this video um, and if you would like to chat about these 24 videos in general, please hashtag 24 days of Ari and me and again, Twitter or Instagram will work. Now, the very final thing I want to mention